Patriot Prime Reviews is a channel for adult collectors and may not be suitable for children under 13 years of age. Viewer discretion is advised. Hey, what's going on guys? Patriot Prime here once again with another video. But before I get started with the subject of this video, I want to give a huge shout out to my sponsor, ToyHacks.com. ToyHacks is a company that provides upgrade decals for modern Transformer figures along with reproduction decals for the vintage ones. While visiting Toy Hacks, make sure and check out the Toy Hacks Armory to see their line of Transformers weaponry in multiple colors and toy stages for awesome display backdrops. Each purchase from Toy Hacks earns you RoboSense that you can use for future purchases. You can check your balance anytime in your cart. Toy Hacks is a company run by collectors for collectors, so make sure and check out ToyHacks.com and tell them Patriot Prime sent you. Now, on to the review. The featured bot in this video is 1988's Generation 1 Browning, or rather, this awesome high quality reproduction of 1988's Generation 1 Browning. Now, this figure right here is in my collection because of Bert the Stormtrooper. Bert bought one of these figures a couple months ago, did a review on it, and after watching his review and seeing what great quality this figure was, I had to get one in my collection. Now, the reason I want a Browning so bad in my collection is this figure right here came from the same Micro Change Gun Robo line that Generation 1 Megatron came from. But unlike Megatron here, Browning didn't make it over here to the States. Now, taking a quick look at the packaging, we've got Browning right here and some fantastic line work. Browning M1910. Side of the box, we got Browning Destron M1910. Other side are more great looking line work. And on this side, we've got some G1 style tech specs. So opening this figure up, this is so cool. I was so thrilled to get this guy. Opening him up, you get a sheet of instructions done in the original Generation 1 style and two sheets of decals. One with silver backing and one with black. And then of course you got the Browning M 1910 on the styrofoam if the light will catch it. Open this up. I have it upside down. Open this up. There you've got Browning, his two weapons, his projectiles, this pistol actually fires, and I just cannot wait to get this guy decaled up and show him off to you guys. So now, without further ado, let's get locked and loaded and check this figure out. And welcome to Patriot Prime Reviews. <laughs> We'll start things off by taking a look at Browning's alt mode first. And of course, he turns into a Browning M1910 pistol. And this figure is dead on to the real thing. I absolutely love this gun mode and that chrome is glorious. So nice and shiny. I have always been a sucker for chrome and this guy has it in spades. Love the sculpted details on the figure, especially here on the handle. You got the logo right there. There's the texture, the screw. We've got Browning M1910 right there. Of course, there's the Decepticon decal that I just applied. Got yellow sights here up top. That's actually a button that I'll show off later on. Front of the gun looks really good. You can see the spring there on the inside. Turn around here on the other side. You've got the release for when the shells eject. I mean, this thing just looks spectacular. What's on this side? Browning M1910. This is just an awesome looking gun. Little small though. It kind of reminds me of a little pocket gun from the gangster movies. But still, this thing looks great. And here he is compared to his cousin, Generation 1 Megatron, who fits in my hand a lot better 
than Browning. Of course, Browning does have one advantage to G1 Megatron. Now, Megatron has a nice spring-loaded trigger, but his projectile function that he had in Japan was nerfed here in the States. So this Megatron cannot shoot projectiles. Browning, on the other hand, can. So he did come with some little yellow projectiles on a sprue, and I've already taken off one. Now, he doesn't really load like you'd think. You actually stick the bullet there in the tip of the gun, and this thing actually fires really good. I mean, that's got some force behind it. Let's uh, test it one more time with everybody's favorite G1 whipping boy, Wheelie here. So, yeah, Wheelie, this is what we all pretty much think of you. And he is taken out. So, yeah, I love this pistol. This is so cool. Now let's get Browning transformed into robot mode. And you want to be careful transforming this figure because there are steps that you have to do in order. Now the robot's arms are right here on the top of the gun. So what you have to do is fold these sections down. But take note, this does not move until you pull the front of the barrel out. There is a locking mechanism right in there. So if that's not pulled out, it's going to stay in place. Now I've seen a lot of the old original Brawnings with that section broke because people try to transform it without extending this and that snaps. Also on the back, you want to pull this out as well. So with both of those sections released, go ahead and lift up the entire top section of the pistol and then twist. Well, hold that for now. So we got this section going on. Now we're going to take the robot legs, which are the handles, just like Generation 1 Megatron. And what you want to do is just extend the handles down until they click, just like so. And then you're going to swing them around. And mine is really tight. So I'm going to take it nice and slow. So there we have the legs. Now we're going to go ahead and take the top of the gun, rotate around, and bring these sections down, forming the arms, and the head pops up. It's on a spring. Kind of looks like uh, Rumble or Frenzy's head right there. So now we're going to take the feet, fold these down. They'll click into place. And man, that guy has got some feet. Then back here, flip down the heel spurs. We are almost done. There is a little bit of parts forming. Browning has a right and left fist that you need to attach. Now they are different, so pay attention. The left fist is just a regular fist that you will pop into place in that hole there on the back of the gun, or what was the back of the gun. And the right fist has a peg, just like the bullet, and it's gonna go into the front barrel forming the other arm. And there you have Browning in robot mode. And just like pistol mode, this figure looks great. I love all that shiny chrome. He looks so good. But the one issue with all that chrome, it's a fingerprint magnet. So get you a nice soft cloth, get those fingerprints wiped off. <laughs> Makes it look a lot better. So, he is G1 through and through. He's got that G1 look, and I love it. The sticker decals look great as well. He's got the red decals there on the shoulders, the big Decepticon logo on the chest, logo there for the waist, down here on the legs. Just, I love how this looks. This, this is amazing. I'm so happy to have this figure in my collection. And let's almost forgot. Let's talk about the die cast. Lots of die cast in this guy. Go ahead and move the arms forward so we can get a good look at this. You've got die cast metal right here for the thighs, die cast metal for the feet. And he, he's got some weight to him. This figure is awesome. Now, articulation. He's a G1. There's not much. The arms can do a complete 360. And they're on a ratchet, so you want to be careful with these arms. You want to pull them out slightly as you move them around. I mean, otherwise, they're not going to move. I'm applying some pressure right here. That arm is not budging, so you want to pull out 
and move the arm around. Another area where you can break this figure. So you want to be really, really careful with this guy. So the arms, complete 360, and he can rotate at the waist. Browning also has a couple of extra accessories. He's got these two chrome blasters, and they look beautiful. Once again, I love chrome. You can't go wrong with it. Both of these blasters are exactly the same. And of course, you can just put them in his fist so he can dual wield. And there you go. That looks awesome. He's a transformer that turns into a gun that wields multiple guns. Now, another option, if you don't want to dual wield, is he does have ports right there on either side of the head that you can plug in one of the guns, if you so choose, to make it a shoulder-mounted weapon. But mine do not fit. It is a super, super tight fit if I can get it to go in. And I am putting some pressure. I cannot... Well, there we go. I mean, that's scary tight. And to be honest, I'm really not a big fan of that look. Also, talk about a weird look. From the front, Browning looks awesome. From the side, what the hell is that? Now, another cool feature Browning has in robot mode, let's go ahead and move this arm forward and remove the blaster, is thanks to the firing gimmick from the pistol, he now has a rocket fist for the right arm. So you've got the little yellow button right there I showed off earlier that was the sight in pistol mode. Pull that back and he launches the fist. Not as hard as he launched the bullet, but still a pretty cool extra feature for a Transformer toy. Reminds me a lot of Shogun Warriors. So there you go, guys. Transformers Generation 1 Browning. And now for some quick size comparisons. Here is 1988's Generation 1 Browning with Generation 1 Megatron, War for Cybertron Trilogy Netflix Megatron, and Kingdom Core Class Megatron. I am absolutely thrilled to have a 1988 Generation 1 Browning in my collection. I know this figure is not an original vintage Transformers toy, but still, what I have is a fantastic reproduction, and I've got no complaints whatsoever. I just find this figure odd and quirky, and I love it. It's going to look great on my display. Though I really wish this guy did make it over to the States, so Bob Budiansky could have gave him a better name than Browning. So, does a 1988 Generation 1 Browning belong in your collection? Well, if you're a hardcore G1 fan or just a fan of quirky oddball Transformers, absolutely, this is a great little figure and a damn near perfect reproduction in my opinion. I've only held an original Browning once, and like I said in the review, it was broken. This guy is perfect, and I love it. I am so happy to have this guy in my collection. I just can't rave about him enough. Thank you so much to my good friend Bert the Stormtrooper for pointing this figure out or showing this figure off to me and showing me where I can buy one. You can get this reproduction figure on eBay. Just look up G1 Browning and you're good to go. So yeah, if you are in the market for a quirky Transformer, Browning hits the bullseye. Now guys, if you enjoyed the video, don't forget to like, don't forget to subscribe, and don't forget to click that bell icon to get notified when I upload new reviews. Also, if you're in any position to help out the channel, I offer channel memberships here on YouTube, and I have to give a huge shout out to all my current channel members, because it's support like yours that keeps this channel growing. Once again, guys, this is Patriot Prime, signing out. Hoo-ah!